As an empath, do you want to know how to not take on their junk? Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another video by John here at the John and the John of New channel. Doing my radio voice this morning. I hope it sounds fine and dandy to you over there on in the YouTube land. <laughs> uh, I get a lot of messages, and I'd like to uh, respond to as many as I can. And this was actually a fairly long one. And... Um, it has a lot in it, so I'd like to go ahead and read the entire thing so you guys get a chance to understand what this person's asking and going through. Uh, here we go. Hi, John. Thanks again for all the work you do to help us along the path to understanding Joshua's message. Well, thank you for noticing that I'm, I'm putting my truth out there. I have a question. In another video, you mentioned how lovingly you were received by others in another country, whereas an American man said everyone wanted to fight him. And you said then, after a few minutes, <laughs> you said you felt like you wanted to fight him too. Can you explain a little more detail how this man's belief was able to affect or rub off somehow onto you? So I'm going to stop there. There's another whole section of this which I will will uh, dive into. Um, I just want to answer this first part first. Um, the <laughs> my, my comment of five minutes later, I wanted to fight him, was a joke. Um, I could feel the tension, I could feel the stress, I could feel the anxiety, and I, I, I was very aware of why people wanted to fight him, because that's what he was sowing, and so that's what he was reaping. Um, for me, had I, had I not been very aware of my own feelings, I would have absolutely succumb to his his anger and rage because it's a very powerful emotion but as yoda said in the star wars you know named must your fears be before banish it you can right named must your fears be before banish it you can so when i hear someone someone come up to me like that in that kind of feeling that kind of sensation i literally start with what's their fear and his was very easy to discover because he really was afraid of being in a Muslim country. And so he was. He thought everyone wanted to fight him because he thought he had a negative view of Muslims. So um, his, his whole issue was that. It didn't really affect me to the point of wanting to fight him. It was just a, a joke for the story's sake, but, um, which is why I laughed when I said it. Um, but he was just not a, you know, he was just not a good place. But the key really was for me to recognize that's that's his, not mine. And if you're really interested in learning more about how to how to deal with being an empath and live a joyful life as an empath, over on the Level Up Spirit channel, I have a whole video, about half an hour video, on how to live a joyful life as an empath. And I'll drop that link in the description below uh, for, if you haven't seen that. It's over on my other long-form channel, which is called the Level Up Spirit channel. And uh, you can find all kinds of interesting things over there. So let me continue on. Um... A separate video of how empathic you are also feels related somehow, and I'm not sure exactly. But I'd like to hear about your thoughts on this. And I had a long-term, as I had a long-term house guest who seemed to be having th that effect on everyone he ever lived with, and I started to feel weird, pervasive anger, as well as to start to erupt in me f around this person. I just find it weird their story is that everywhere they live, they keep finding gaslighting and passive-aggressive people. And I'm direct and don't consider myself to fit this mold. Every person they lived with? Question mark. This person moves every seven to nine months or so, and I'm baffled. I feel weird energetic disturbances. I don't completely understand around this person and would love your thoughts on this as I finally asked him to leave. Remarkably, as their attention turned elsewhere, the entire environment in my home started to feel much more peaceful again. Like, woo, back to normal. Thanks out of time for the insight. Keep feeling like the answering this question. If you feel like answering this question. I do feel like answering your question. Um, <coughs> there are many people who live in the victim mode, and in the victim mode, they will often always accuse other people of their own issues. Uh, passive aggressive. When, they, when he says, you're gaslighting me, you're passive aggressive, that's because they themselves are feeling like you're out to get them. They're, they're living the victim mode, and they go from house to house. And when you ask them to leave, I'm 100% positive 
100% positive that the next person they moved in with, you were the topic of discussion how nasty you were. And you were probably the reason why they moved. Oh, they, they kicked me out because of this, and how horrible they were to me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's what negative people do. They come to you to dump their negativity, and then they, when you finally they wear out the place where they can dump their negativity, they go somewhere else and use the last experience as the first negative thing. It's sort of a cyclical thing. Um, this is a classic victim mode uh, personality, and the only way they can break out of that is to, is to release their past and get very present. And, and choose to, to create more positively. And the only thing you can do as an empath is actively say, that's theirs, not mine. I think it was wonderful of you to kick them out. I know that sounds unloving and uncaring. I think it's wonderful of you to kick them out. The reason I think it's wonderful of you to kick them out because the only way he'll ever learn anything is if that he has consequences. Or I don't even know if it's a he or she. I think it's a he. Um, uh, unless they have consequences. If they never have a consequence, there's no reason for them to even consider changing. Unfortunately, sometimes their consequences are what they choose to, to be the victim of. And they choose that story to be the next horrible thing that they're suffering through. But people like that, one of the things that they do is they go find empathic people. Because empathic people want to help. People, empathic people want to listen. And they come into their experience and, they, and they're like, I want to help this person. I want to give them a place to live. I want to... You know, get him back on his feet. I want to, you know, all these things, and then they just use it up until they until they can't anymore. And then they go. It's not your job to save the world, but in, in in making your part of the world so bright, as an empath, it's important to make sure that you recognize that those negative sensations are not yours; they're theirs. And so that's theirs, not mine. That's theirs, not mine. Remember that phrase. Keep that phrase. Use that phrase. Whenever you feel that negative sensation, that's theirs, not mine. Because what you're doing is you're selling, telling your subconscious mind, I don't need to take on other people's energy. I don't need to take on other people's emotions. I don't need to have that experience. So you say, that's theirs, not mine. You're actually training your subconscious mind to release attachment to other people's emotional states. And then, then you can take take the ones that you like and Discard the ones you don't, and you have you have more control over the situation. Um, as I said, when I when that man in Egypt came up to me, and I and <laughs> everyone wanted to fight him, I, I the first thing I asked was, "What's his fear? What's he afraid of?" And I knew that the whole anger and angst was all about him not being respected, not being treated well, you know, and and it, it, the way you're treated is the way you treat others. Do unto others as you would do unto me. You know, what you put out, you get back. So l love the people in the world, you get love in return. Hate the people in the world, you get hate in return. And in this case, as an empath, you feel that emotional exchange. And it comes to you to train your mind and your subconscious mind not to take things on. So I hope that answers your question, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. The John of the New Channel is solely funded by your generous donations and purchases of private readings and merchandise. To help out, go to johnofnew.com or use the donation link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.